Amen. Thank you, Redeemed Worship. Our scripture reading today comes from the very last words of Matthew in his gospel. The 28th chapter, beginning at the 18th verse. After the resurrection, Jesus is addressing his disciples and he says this. Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading, the hearing, the understanding, the application of this, his holy word. Let's pray. Lord, every word that proceeds from uh, the mouth of your son, the son of God, Jesus, is important, valuable, and instructive. But how much so that he speaks to his disciples and to us as the resurrected, empowered, king of the universe, the son of the living God, ready to ascend to the Father, preparing his people for the Holy Spirit's coming, and empowering us for his mission in this world. Amazing, amazing indeed. May it speak to our hearts and instruct us today in Jesus' name. Amen. So, so this is how Matthew chooses to conclude. Now, uh, we've had uh, uh, the birth of Jesus, we've had the Beatitudes, we have the Sermon on the Mount, we had all the healings, we had all the miracles, we had parables, uh, sometimes hard to understand what Jesus is trying to say, and, uh, and we had the, the, uh, the crucifixion week, and then we have the account of the resurrection, and now we finally come to the very end. How does he want to wrap up his 28-chapter gospel? And this is the way he does it. Let's put this on the screen. We'll just walk through it. Uh, then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So uh, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit, and we are, uh, we are sent and commissioned by the authority of Jesus. And so no matter who you touch, no matter who you're speaking with, who no matter who God brings into your life, whether it's going to Honduras or whether it's going across the street and talking to a neighbor, we are doing it under the authority, the umbrella of the authority of Jesus Christ, which is an amazing, amazing thing if you wrap your mind around that to which we have been called. We have been called and commissioned by Jesus himself and authorized to go and spread the good news. Go and serve the least of these. Go and tell others about, his, about him and about his great name. Uh, so let's keep, let's keep going. Uh, therefore, go. No ambiguity here, is there? There's no nuance. It's not a hard passage to understand. You've been authorized, now go. A better translation of this is actually, as you are going, uh, not everybody's going to be able to go to Honduras or, or uh, like Megan said, go to Mexico or travel to the ends of the earth, but we're all commissioned and we're all called and we're all under the authority of Jesus to go as we're going, as we're going about our daily life. We are on a mission. Uh, we go and as we're going, we're to make disciples of all the nations. So we're, we're, to, we're to go to the, to the uh, unconvinced and help convince them to be used by Jesus to say to people, there's a better way. I know a Savior, and you can know him too. You can meet him, and you can follow him just like I have. It's, it's not that difficult, actually. Uh, go and make disciples of all the nations. Oh, that's no small task, is it? Of all the nations. It's actually not, not just the nations with uh, boundaries like, uh, like India or China. Uh, the language here is of every language and ethnic group. Uh, somebody estimated uh, there are about 17,446 unique people groups in the world. Somebody stayed up late at night and figured all that out. More than 17,000 people and language groups in all the world. 
And for 2,000 years, this mission has been to go to all the people. Uh, hard for us to think about because we've lived in the West and our ancestors have lived in the West. Uh, but at some point in time, somebody came to our ancestors and told them about Jesus. And that got passed down and passed down and passed down and reached us finally. But it's only because somebody went started with the Apostle Paul. He went on three missionary journeys in his life. He had to get out of Jerusalem. He had to go where the need was greater. And he went as a missionary. And so 17,446 unique people groups, it's estimated that of those, 7,000 are still unreached. 7,000 have not heard the gospel of Jesus Christ in a language and in their own cultural context that they can understand. Wycliffe Bible Translators, I'm not sure if you know about this ministry, they've been at it for a long, long time, sending people to, under, to learn and know the context, the culture, and the language of a particular people group so they can have the scriptures in their own language. And most of these people, most of these missionaries, devote their lifetime to serving and translating the scriptures into a language that, those, uh, that others can understand. Uh, so we, we go, make disciples of all the nations. What we do uh, when they come to faith in Christ? Well, we baptize them. And we baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You wonder where we get the idea of the Trinity? It comes right here. We serve one God, three distinct persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And Jesus affirmed the Trinity right here. And then we're to teach them. And what are we supposed to teach them? Uh, our, our own uh, unique ideas about how the world should work? No, we teach them everything that Jesus commanded. We teach them to follow Jesus and obey as I've commanded you. So uh, not a suggestion. No nuance here. This is a direct command from the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. And then he says, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So every time you go talk to that neighbor, every time you meet that homeless person on the corner, every time uh, you, uh, you have the opportunity to serve someone else, every time you might have the opportunity to go to Honduras of all things, Jesus is with you. And Jesus is with you. And Jesus is with you as we live on mission with him. Uh, why do we go to Honduras? Why do we go to a place uh, like Honduras when there's so many needs uh, right here in Las Vegas? And there are. And I, I stand here during our moment for mission, and often I tell you about the ways that we're making a difference here in Las Vegas to, uh, to meet, uh, to address those needs. But why do we go to a place like Honduras? Uh, it's, it's because of this command. It's because of the command of Jesus to go and to go to the nations. It's also to remind us that God loves the whole world. The whole wide world. And it's to, it's to tell the Honduran people, uh, many who are living in a kind of poverty that most of us will never experience here in North America, to tell them that they matter. That they're important to God, and they're important to us, and that they're worth it. They're worth it. They're worth us taking a week, and it's such a small thing for me even to talk about taking a week when others devote their life, their lifetime to mission, but, but for us to take a week, it, it was worth it. Wasn't it worth it? It's absolutely worth it to share with them the love of God. And then, oh my goodness, how they bless us more than we bless them. To work alongside and see the joy and the kids and all, uh, it's, just a, it's just a delight. We go to serve them, and then they end up serving us. And our lives are richer for it. Um, my introduction to missions was kind of unique. Uh, missions was kind of off the radar for me as a university student and then going to seminary. But then my first church, I was an associate, and, uh, and my lead pastor, his name was Dale, and he became the pastor of this church and had just come back, he and his family had just come back from the mission field. And he would, he would speak often with tears in his eyes about God's call on his life to, to mission. So he was a student at Wheaton College, Christian College in the Midwest. And it was in the late 50s. It was 1956, actually. He was a sophomore at Wheaton College. And, uh, and earlier that year, a chapel speaker got up and, and talked about what had happened earlier that year in a remote part of Ecuador. Jim Elliott and four other missionaries 
who had done their best to establish connection with a remote uh, tribe of people there, the Akas, uh, in Ecuador, thought they had made enough friendly connections with them to actually make a physical contact. And so they, they went to a, a riverside, and, and there they were going to meet, assuming that it was going to be a friendly meeting. But other villagers came, and it was a very unfriendly meeting, and five of them were killed. Five of these missionaries who had gone to share the love of Jesus were killed. And so in this, uh, in this chapel service at, at Wheaton College, uh, the chapel speaker is talking about these missionaries and talking about their devotion, their commitment, and, and they're not with us anymore. Uh, so the question was for these students, these university students, so then who will go? Who will go? If God calls you to go on mission, to live as a missionary, would you go? Would you commit yourself to going? And all over that auditorium, men and women stood. And, and, uh, and my friend, the pastor of the church, Dale, he stood, sophomore, 19 years old. He stood and said, if God calls me, I will, I will go. He didn't know that uh, Joyce, on the other side over here of the auditorium, uh, who he would marry by the end of, uh, end of their time together, was also standing. And so their life went on. They, uh, they went to seminary, and they had three children. And they had a very successful and happy pastoral ministry going in Wichita, Kansas. And then the call came. Uh, there are pastors in Indonesia that need training. And will you go? Will you go? So they loaded up their stuff in barrels. And they loaded up the family. And they went to uh, Jakarta. And they lived in Jakarta for 10 years. Training pastors. And it, it absolutely transformed his life. And it transformed my life too, to hear about this story and this, this commitment that was made as a, young, as a young man. Hearing the story of those who gave their lives in the cause of Christ. And will you go? I suppose the question is the same for us today. And like I said, most of us are not going to go uh, across, across borders today. Well, we can go across the street. We can go next door. You go to that street corner. You go to that shelter. We can all share the love of Jesus wherever God leads us, wherever he calls us. Um, thank you so much for, uh, for doing what you did to, uh, to send us. So you commissioned us to go on this trip to Honduras. Thank you. Uh, and we felt, we felt the support and the prayers so much. Thank you for your prayers. And thanks to those of you who, who gave and supported this ministry. So there were five of us from MVPC that went, but it, but it sure felt like we were, we were representing the whole church. It felt like that to us. We were all in this together, even though it was just, uh, just the five of us. And so even though uh, God sometimes calls to dangerous places, places like Haiti, where a young couple just lost their lives. Here came a, a gang in to steal their van. Steal the van. That's fine. Steal the van. We don't, we'll get another van. But then killed them. Took their lives too. And so there they were. Doing their best to obey the command of Jesus. To go make disciples. Baptize. Teach. And Jesus was with them even to the end. And we still go. And we still go. And we go not alone. You are not going alone today. You're not sitting where you're sitting alone today. You will not leave this place alone today. You will not get in your car and go out this parking lot alone today. You will go because Jesus is with you and with me Amen. to the very end of the age. Amen? Amen? Amen. Shortest sermon ever. Do not get used to it. <laughs> you know how it starts? Let's go. Let's go forth in the world in peace and be of good courage. Let's hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Support the weak. Love and serve the Lord with gladness and with joy. Honor all people and... Let's go forth knowing that the unconditional love of God the Father Almighty, the amazing grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship, communion, and power, power of the Holy Spirit is with you now and forever. And everyone said, Amen. let's go.